Eastside Community Church. Man, y'all are y'all look beautiful today. I'm super excited to. Uh, this is my second time being up here preaching. If you don't know who I am, I'm the youth pastor. So anytime Pastor Gary don't feel like preaching, he just makes me do it. Uh, no, I'm just just kidding. Might be the last. <laughs> Listen, uh oh. Yeah, someone. Uh, I was up here panicking a little bit because uh, I had my notes up here. I think Abby tried to sabotage me by taking my uh, stack, taking my notes and hiding them up there. It's like, uh oh, I'm gonna have to wing it here. Listen, no, uh, but man, we're we're super excited um, to be here today. Uh, you know, just celebrate our students. You know, we've got we've got a lot of really cool things happening with our youth students. Youth camp is coming up very very quick. Um, and I, I'm just uh, super thankful for you guys. Um, if you've been praying these past couple weeks, like I asked, um, you know, uh, thank you. Uh, just continue praying and uh, interceding for our students. I uh, just want to announce real quick that if you are a parent of a student that is going to camp, we're having a very important meeting after after serve youth service on Wednesday. It'll be about 810. Um, we're just going to go over some information of your stu- that your students need to know. Also, you need to be checking your emails. Whatever email that I receive from you guys, um, for youth camp, um, I asked a couple, like several weeks ago for emails. Check your emails tomorrow. Throughout the day, you will be receiving a parent form that you'll need to fill out information, and that's like the big packet uh, for your kid going to camp. Uh, that way, you do not have to do it on Wednesday after our meeting. Otherwise, we'll sit down and make you do it. All right? Um, but, man, not every uh, Sunday do you see a uh, tent on stage. I had to move some stuff around. Logan, I'm sorry if this throws off your cam- camera angles. We're going to work with it, all right? Not every Sunday you uh, see, see a tent on stage. Actually, last night I slept here um, because Re- Rebecca said I take up too much room at the house, so she kicked me out, and I just set up a tent on stage. I'm just kidding. I did not actually sleep here. I actually don't like tents very much. But, um, man, so I think everybody really has, like, a either a great story or a really bad story about tents. Um, you either love them or you hate them entirely. There's no in between. Like, I'm sure there's many of you have a tent story, and that tent story is why you go camping in an RV. Like, you're like, listen, I ain't doing that no more. (laughs) Wake up in the middle of the night and you're soaking wet because the tent that was supposed to keep you dry is not. Does anybody, like, automatically think of a horror story? Like, anybody, like, have a, like, a story of sleeping in a tent and you're like, never again? Does anybody, like, actually have one? So some of you got to. It's just, or it's just probably because it's hot, you know, and gross. Um, you know, I'm sure everyone has like a similar experience um, of like of like stories. Like you see an item and it makes you think of a story. Uh, maybe like you enter your home and you have them. Uh, like maybe seeing a picture or a um, you know a snow globe. Uh, actually, if you enter Pastor Gary's office, you see a lot of stuff on the shelves that are like different stories. So he like. One of my cool favorite things about his office is the, is the helmets in there. So he, he got a Hildale football helmet, and he also has a Paul's Valley helmet. Uh, and they, they, they're like, they remind him of his time at other ministries. So like Paul's Valley, he pastored in Paul's Valley. And also he has his high school football helmet up there. And so, and he also has like Bengals helmets that I'm sure make him think of an AFC championship. Um, actually, Cowboys and Bengals play each other this year. So, so you... you may, yeah, <laughs> Pastor Gary says I'm preaching that morning because he's going to be there. But, yeah, you may see me and Pastor Gary fight because I'm a big Cowboys fan. So uh, that, that'll be quite interesting. But, um, uh, you know, you're probably thinking of items in your home right now that make you think of an old story. Um, we all have something that, you know, we keep as mementos. Maybe it's like an item from a trip. Um, you know, I have, I have an item. Maybe it's something completely incidental. That I'll tell you exactly what I mean by that. One of my favorite things in my parents' house that, uh, that reminds me of a story is um, some burns on the stove and on the floor. There's some like, little slight burns. So um, it, it is my all-time favorite story. One day, me and my dad, so my dad's a sports editor for the Muskogee Phoenix. We're going to the, uh, we're going to the state tournament for softball, and I get to go with them. I'm super excited. We're ready to go. Um, I am in, so where, where my sister's room is positioned, uh, if you stand in her doorway, you can see through the dining room into the kitchen. 
So we're standing there and we're talking, and my dad comes in the room, and he's like, all right, what are y'all talking about? You know, blah, 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 just cutting conversation. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, my dad, standing like this, goes, oh, no, takes off running. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I peek out of the door, I look into the kitchen, and on the stove is a big ball of flames. My dad had set his laptop bag on the stove. And his entire laptop was engulfed in flames. So listen, I, 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 when I was young, still to this day, like yesterday we went out fishing, and I had a pole in the water, and I, I was actively trying to start a fire with the sticks, what, waiting for a bite. Didn't get any bites, by the way. Didn't set a fire either. So it was 0 for 2 yesterday. Um, but so even today, I'm like a pyromaniac. I love fires, and I love putting them out, right? So when I see this, I'm excited. I'm like, yes. I know exactly how to put this thing out. So I rush in there, and my dad gets there first. So he grabs the laptop bag, pulls it off. Laptop bag falls in half. Now we have a fire on the stove. Now we have a fire on the floor. <laughs> so right now we're, we're in trouble. My dad decides, all right, we're going to start stomping it out. Great idea, right? We're, we're like, good idea to start stomping it out. He doesn't have shoes on. So my dad starts stomping it out. His sock's on fire. He falls to the floor. He's like, ah, getting the sock off. So now my dad's out. Now I have a fire on the floor. Now I have a fire on the stove. In, come my, in comes my sister. Like, great, now I have help. I can get two flames. She can get one. We're good. My sister sees the flames, screams, falls on the floor. She's out. So now I'm like, all right, I, I got to handle this all myself. So I grab a rag. I start beating the flames out, get the fire out. And so to this day, we still have some, like, slight burns that you can kind of see. And every time I see it, it reminds me of those stories. So those burns on the floor are a reminder. I know they're just silly stories, but reminders are important with our walk with God. Too many times we check off moments with God and just forget about it. Like, we, we remember big moments that we had, and, and, and we just move it aside. Like, thanks, God, until next time. Too many times we're like that. Then the next time comes, and we forget about the battle he's won in our lives before. So we are looking at our situation and not the one who resolves it. We look at our own situations we forget about the moments in our lives where we have had victory in our lives. We look at our giant wall, but not the one that tears them down. And he has torn them down. So whether you sit in this church today as a soon-to-be freshman in college, a middle schooler, an elder of the church, whoever, listen, you will face walls in your life. You will face battles in your life. Walls where you feel like you're alone, where you can't handle it, where you're scared. But I hope this message today allows you to remember that God is one in your life before. God is one in your life before. And today I hope this message inspires you to start remembering those. So that when you face those walls next time, you've got, you've got something in the back pocket. So uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, if you have your Bibles, we're going to go through several verses today. Listen, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation is overtaking you that is not common to man. God is faithful. And he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he, he will also provide the way to escape that you may be able to endure it. So God gives us exactly what we need to fight it. And today I'm encouraging you to start remembering the times God has won in your life. And start taking note of the times he does win in your life. Listen, I, I, when I went to college, one of the most impactful things in my life, the moment that I realized ministry was for me, I went to Northeastern State University. I was in a theater program. Listen, in high school, um, all throughout school, I was, I was pretty bullied. You know, I, I, was, I was one, and I, you know, and it really built me into who I am because I, I learned to stand up for myself. Um, and, and I've also learned to, to love people no matter how, what they say about you. You know, so I, I feel like I'm fairly graceful, you know, not to be, like, boastful or anything, but, like, I feel like those moments built me, right? 
So when I went to college, you know, I was never popular. I was never popular. I was always the outcast. I maybe had two friends in high school. The rest of them, you know, I kind of was on my own. Um, but I went to college, and, like, I was super, like, my first, so we did a children's musical the first uh, first thing when I got to school. I got I did auditions. It was Hank the Cow Dog, the musical. Um, and I got I got the role of Hank the Cow Dog. Uh, my first my first ever show in college, the lead role. Immediately my life was different. I had friends. All everybody wanted to be my friend. I was invited to parties, something I was never d- done in high school. And immediately I fell into the trap. I I, I think Satan realized what 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 I wanted in my heart and God knew what I needed. And I chose what I wanted instead of what I needed. And then I forgot about every battle that I've won. And it eventually fell into the part where I was getting drunk a lot. My grades were suffering. I was angry all the time. Like I didn't want to go home because I didn't want to face what I'd done. I didn't want to face the decisions and stuff that I'd made before. So eventually it came to the point where I was going to get a job at, the, at school where I got to stay in my dorm all summer and didn't even have to go home. I, vi- I didn't get it. And I was a shoe in to get it. I feel like that was a God thing. I think God really shut the door on that. Said, listen, no, you're going to listen to me now and you're going to go home. Because the second I stepped back in the church and I stepped back in the youth ministry, I saw, I saw real love. I saw the student, the, the kids that I was in youth group with run to me and was like, hey, you know, remember that time we did this? Remember that time we accidentally threw your, car, your credit card on top of come and go? This is a long story, but it happened. We had to climb on top of it. It was crazy. Um, but I, it started reminding me of all the moments, like, where we prayed together, where we worshiped together. And then I, then I was, like, sitting there. I was like, God, like, why? Like, I, I, I'd done all this stuff before. I'd been this bad person all before, like why, 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 why are you treating me like this, like why, when I've been so far from you, and in, in, I, in that moment, God whispered to me, in my ear, he said, I've been close enough to whisper in your ear, and it shook me to my core, that I realized every time I was partying, where I was intoxicated, where I was doing exactly what God, what God didn't want me to do. He was close enough to whisper in my ear. He never leaves you and never will forsake you. So today I'm trying to inspire you today to understand, listen, you're going to face battles. You will face battles, but reminders help our faith. I've said, 1 John 16, says, I've said these things to you, that in me you have peace in the world. You will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I think I have a slide for that verse. That overcome, overcome the world is a reminder. God is giving you a reminder right there. I have overcome the world. So listen, you know, you may feel like God hasn't done much in your life, but listen, he's telling you right now, you've got a winner on your side. Whatever your battle today is, whatever it will be tomorrow, next year, start reminding of what God has done. We see examples of people doing this in the Bible, and this is the title. This is exactly why I have a tent on stage. The title of my message today is, What is in Your Tent? What is in Your Tent? So let me tell you the story of Abram, who would become Abraham. We've got a picture of him up there. Abram was a man of great wealth. He had many cattle. He's a blessed man. Uh, he was a man that loved God. He, he was a man that was protected by God from Sodom. During the war of the four kings versus the five kings, Abram was a leader of 318 men of his adopted sons and took down many armies with them. He was a man that was promised by God to have many sons. He had a promise, a calling on his life that God had plans for him to have many sons of his own. But at this point in scripture, he, he didn't have any. So we enter Genesis chapter 15, verses 1, verses 1 through 5. We're going to read through it here. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter 15, 1 through 5. It says, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one that will inherit my state is Eliezer of Damascus. 
And Abram said, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, this man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said, so shall your offspring be. So listen, Abram, ugh, if I can get in this thing. So, so Abram is chilling in his tent. Now obviously there are much bigger tents. <laughs> Abram had a much bigger tent. But he's sitting here and he's telling God to look at his situation. As if God hasn't been looking. As if God didn't know what his situation was. Listen, God knows your situation. And as Abram sits in his tent and he's complaining, he's like, God, listen, God, I'm in this tent with no sons. I've got all this money, all of this all of these things in my life, but I have no son that you promised me. So God hears that. And what does he do? He pulls Abram out of his tent. The situation where he's looking at his situation doesn't care about what anything else has happened in his life. And you may wonder why God did that. Because sometimes we need a new perspective. Abram didn't remind himself. But when God pulled him out of the tent to look at his own situation, God reminded, me, reminded him of the blessings that he's given Abram. We enter, we, oftentimes we enter battles with no ammunition. We sit there and face it without God. We sit there and face it by ourselves with no, with no armor, no reminders. So we, we sit in the tent like this, and we're, we're just like, God, God, my marriage, my kids are, aren't following Jesus anymore. Gosh, I, God, I'm broke. I don't have no money for chicken nuggets. My shoes stink. And everything's just going bad, God. And we're sitting there complaining like God doesn't know what we're going through. As if God hadn't planned that already. We face a battle and we don't remind ourselves. We forget, we forget about the time where we've had financial blessings in our life. We forget about the time where he healed my family member. We forget about the time, we forget about the time that we have a roof over our head to sleep under. We forget too many times about our wins and what God has done in our life. We forget about the meal that we ate. We forget about the church we get to be a part of. We forget about the fact that we get to worship freely without conviction. We forget that. But God is telling you today to get out of that tent. Stop putting yourself in situations where you have nothing to remind yourself and you're only looking at what's bad in your life. Listen, God's going to take care of you. It says that verse, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. He will overcome your financial burdens. He will overcome your broken marriage. He will overcome the fact that your kids are falling apart and addicted to drugs. He will, he will your, your house is flooded. God will take care of you. We forget. Sometimes we need a new perspective. Start looking at things with a different perspective. Start trusting in God. Stop having this false sense of hope. Stop, stop having this false sense of faith. We sit there and tell God, like, God, if you love me, you will do this for me. What? Did we not forget that Jesus came and died on the cross for us? Did we not forget that we are in this situation and we're sleeping on the streets? What are we doing? 
We need to start saying, God, you love me and you will because I trust you. Listen, Jesus tells us that the birds do not store food. They don't store food in barns. Why? Because they know they'll be fed. Listen, and, and he says, look, do I not love you more than I love the birds? Today, you need to start having a new perspective in your life. God has your back, and we see this lived out in David's life. We see this in David's life. So get David and Goliath is one of the most used Bible stories, even in like outside of the church. And we see it in sports all the time, like when there's an underdog. Cody knows what I'm talking about. When there's an underdog, they'll say, it's like David versus Goliath. Y'all see that horse race, the Kentucky Derby? The horse with the longest odds smoked everybody. That horse was fast, man. It's a, and there, people were saying it's like a David versus Goliath. And it's so funny that we, we, we see this all the time. But one verse in that passage, I, I, you know, I, I always kind of look up and see what other pastors say about certain verses. And this is not really talked about too much. But in the passage, it says this. So let's get caught up in the story. You obviously know the story of David and Goliath. It says David uh, comes from his tent. He wasn't in the military. He, he came from his father to deliver bread. He was like a DoorDash driver, basically. <laughs> David was delivering bread to the soldiers, right? So David comes by, drops off his DoorDash, sees Goliath making fun of all of his brothers and all the soldiers that their brothers are with. So David sees this, right? David shows up, sees Goliath. Goliath gets cracked. Goliath gets sliced. Goliath's done. David's victorious. We're caught up now. However, in the passage, it says this. Listen. When the Israelites returned from the Philistines, they plundered their camp. David took the Philistines' head and brought it to Jerusalem. He put the Philistines' weapons in his own tent. Listen, it's so funny, last time I preached, I had a bat in my hands. Now I got a sword, right? Man, I, I think each, each time I preach, I just need to get a bigger weapon. We need to figure out who has a bazooka. I need that <laughs> next one, just get bigger and drive a full tank in here for my, you know. Listen, so David brings the weapons. Now listen, Goliath was obviously much bigger than I am. So this sword wouldn't do it for Goliath. Probably had like a great, one of those great swords. Maybe even bigger than that. So this is a large sword, a heavy sword. And David brought it all the way back to put it in his own tent. Now you may ask why he did that. He takes the armor to his own tent to remind himself of the victory God had in his life. You remember when, when, what David said before he fought Goliath? He said, if God delivered me from the lion and the bear, he will deliver me in this situation. David knows all about reminders in his life. David knows. And so that's exactly why he brought the weapons and the armor of Goliath back to his own tent. So we, we get back in our tent as David, and we're like, God, things, things are hard. I'm, I'm scared. And we see the victory that God had in our life. We see the sword. We, he has the reminder, so when his head pops off the pillow in the morning, he knows, it says, God's got me. You'll remember when I took down that giant? You remember when God, you took that down, that, when God, you took that giant down for me? You, God, you remember when the lion tried to attack me and you helped me kill it with my bare hands? That's the attitude David has in this moment. Listen, you may feel like, God, I don't feel loved by anyone. Reminder. God, things are hard. My family's falling apart. There's your reminder. Listen, you need a reminder. And it's time you start storing those reminders in your tent. So I challenge you today. I challenge you today. 
when your head pops off the pillow, you remind yourself of the victories God had in your life. Stop allowing yourself to sit in an empty tent, hoping for God just to solve every situation and have no faith that there's a reason we have trophy cases. You know, first thing I saw when me and Pastor Gary walked into Hilldale High School were their golf state championships. There's a reason that we show those off. You know, I was at Cody's graduation party. You walk outside, you see all the reward, awards. Man, on my desk at home, I have two Pinewood Derby championship trophies. When I won the fantasy football championship, that trophy was in my living room. So why is it that when we win a trophy and a reward, we hang it up on the wall? But when God heals us, we don't write it on our mirror. We don't, get a, we don't plaster it on our wall to say, look, things are hard. And we look at that reminder, God healed me. Today I challenge you to start putting reminders in your life. We see accomplishments and it brings us joy. So why, why are we missing the mark here? Why are we missing the mark in our faith? But God has done some incredible things in our life. Many of us have faced hard times and overcome them. I challenge you today to start writing down your victories. You have a piece of paper there. And you have a lot of notes. I kind of like that we didn't put all the, the notes and follow along with it because I want all the space for you. I challenge you today. Start thinking back. Tam, you've come a long way in your faith. Start celebrating that. There's a lot of you in this moment. You, your house fell, you know, your house flooded. But God's rebuilding that for you. God's taking care of you. Remind yourself of that. So that when things get hard, you look back at your previous situation. TJ, I know you came a long way from a deep, dark place in times. But God's taking care of you. Remind yourself of that. Whatever it is that you faced in your life, whatever moments that you, you had victory, and it could be small things. We're going to celebrate small victories in this church today. As a church, we're going to celebrate the big ones, we're going to celebrate the small ones. I encourage you today, write down those. Hang them where you can see it. So when you, when you pray every night, you remind yourself, God's got me. So when you face those walls, you look back like David and said, like that, like that time I got healed, like that time I, I was broke, that time I had no place to sleep, that time I had nothing to eat. Look at me now. God's got me. So today I encourage you, listen, if you're in this place today and you're in this church today and you feel like you're, you're in a dark place and you, you have nowhere to go and you have no place and no understanding of where to step now, I want you to head to these altars. We're going to lay hands on you. We're going to help God remind you. These altars where God's going to speak to you, he's going to remind you of who he says you are, remind you of where you're going. Just like he reminded me in that moment where I stepped back in church and he said, listen. He said, I was close enough to whisper in your ear. You're going to have that moment today. So if you, are, if you feel that way in this church right now, you feel like you're facing a battle, you're facing a wall, and there's nobody there to help you, and you feel super alone, I challenge you today to step up in these altars. And the rest of you, if you feel like, man, God's done some incredible things in my life right now, find a pen, find something, put it in your phone on your notes, and I want you to write down moments. I want you to post it on your, your Facebook page so when it comes up in a year, it reminds you that God's, God's got a way of using those memories, man. Because when, when things get the hardest and you pop open that Facebook page, you remember the time you got baptized and the time you, got, you, you were freed from something. I challenge you as a church to do that today. Stop living without reminders. God's going to take care of you. So if, if, you're, if you're feeling that way today, 
We're going to pray for a few minutes and then we'll dismiss. But if you're feeling that way, I do encourage you to step up. So we want to pray for you. We want you to have that breakthrough today. Lord, 